Hi, I'm John with Diamond Age Tool. Today we're going to go through the basic startup and valve on your new cleaning skid. Uh, to start with, uh, I want to go through how to prime the system. Uh, regarding the cleaning procedures, I will have a uh, written procedure as to run times, so you won't need to try to remember any of that. However, the, the goal is to show you just how to prime the system. Uh, that way, when the system is uh, running, we're not uh, worrying about burning the pump up. Um, to start, you've got valves going both to this holding tank and to the drain. Uh, when you're trying to flush the system, you can open up to the drain. Also, when you're going to start to prime it, uh, you can also run into the drain. On the lower portion, you've got two valves. One coming from your holding tank, which is the feed that you're going to use during the cleaning process. One coming in from your inlet. The inlet is going to be your feed when you are not only flushing the system or flushing the membranes out, but uh, you're also going to be doing that when you're just testing the membranes to see how they're producing after cleaning. Um, on the top, you can isolate which uh, or how many uh, membranes you're using or which membranes you're cleaning. These are your concentrate lines, so this is ultimately your outlet side for your concentrated impurities, which would come back down through your concentrate flow meter, which is adjustable here. You can restrict it uh, through the flow gate or flow meter. It'll come over here, and then you can choose whether or not you want the concentrated impurities to go back to the tank. So in the cleaning process, you're going to want the concentrated chemical to go back to the tank. When you're flushing or testing, you're going to just send the concentrate down the drain so you have this valve open. On the lower side, you're going to all, on the back side, we'll, we'll scan to that in a little bit. Um, you're going to also see uh, you have inlet valves that you would shut those inlet feed valves uh, to the membranes if you are not utilizing that membrane housing for cleaning. Um, there's also valves on the uh, product, the clean water, that would come out and either go to the drain or to the tank as well. Keep in mind, as during the cleaning process, you'll have both of the drain valves closed. So while it's cleaning, your positions of your valves are going to be such that your concentrated impurities and your product are both going back to this tank because ultimately we want to keep it as closed loop as we can, keep the uh, water circulating through the system. The way that it works is you're going to want to maintain, well, using the chemical, you'll add the, uh, the five gallons of chemical that you receive. Um, actually, you have ten gallons coming, but start with five. You'll add the five gallons of chemical uh, to the tank. You'll get it primed, and you'll then open up your feed to the pump and open up your concentrate and your product line to the tank, close your drains off once these are open, and just circulate the product. You'll circulate for about 15 minutes. What you want to do is you want to maintain no more than 110 degrees at a maximum and a pH of between 2.5 and 3.5. If your pH starts to climb, simple litmus paper is going to be the best thing to test with. It's cheap, it's readily available, uh, really any pool supply house will have it, um, and I'm sure you carry it on your truck. So what you're going to want to do is maintain your pH level at that 2.5 to 3.5. As your pH climbs, use muriatic acid to just bring it back down. Because as you dissolve mineral, you're going to have it get dirty. That muriatic acid will help control the pH and bring, by bringing it down. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and prime it right now. We'll start it up. To do that, turn your water on to the system, open your inlet valve, what you'll see is water will start flowing through the system. You can go ahead and open the drain valves, and you're going to see water is going to start flowing. Once you have water flowing, you can go ahead and turn on your RO system. The sensor switch, all you have to do is press and hold your finger on top. Red light will come on. It'll start a 10 second delay. 
and then your pump will then turn on. Pump goes up through your inlet filter. Your inlet filter will probably need to be changed every time you do a cleaning or relatively close because it will probably build up with some debris. You may even see the filter start to melt uh, just because of the acidity of the water. So once you have the pump running, you have everything going, what you then can do, and this process can be relatively quick, is you can switch it over to the tank. In doing so, what you will do is you'll open your feed valve to the tank, you'll close off your drain. Once your drain is going, you'll hear water going in. Again, you already have chemicals, there's no need to overly dilute it. You'll then open up your, your feed valve to the bottom. That's now your suction valve. It'll be sucking water out of the tank. And now you can close off your inlet feed. Now you allow this to circulate in such a manner. You're gonna have a pretty high flow rate here concentrate because we're not testing, we're just circulating. You're gonna see your pump pressure is maintaining somewhere between 100 and 150. Your inlet pressure is gonna be relatively low. Obviously, probably nothing when it's coming out of the tank because you're actually sucking it out of the tank. The key is that you make sure that when that valve is open, you don't starve the pump, making sure there's chemical in here. Circulate for that 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, what you can go ahead and do Shut the system off. Let the system sit for another 15 minutes. After 15 minutes of sitting and allowing that chemical to just soak, go ahead and turn the system back on. After the 10 second delay, it'll start to, to flush again. There really shouldn't be any need to go through the priming process. You're gonna get a lot of effervescing in this housing after it sits due to the fact that you have calcium carbonate on the membranes. As that dissolves, it effervesces all like uh, an Alka-Seltzer would if you throw it in water. So it's gonna be bubbling and frothing for a little bit. That's a good thing. What you'll do is you'll run it for another 10 to 15 minutes after it's soaked. Once that process is done, you're ready to flush the membranes out and test their performance. What you will do, is you're going to again open your feed valve and close your, off your tank valve. Open your drain lines. Close your tank off. And then you're just going to allow it to run. Allow the system to run for 10, 15, 20 minutes. You can check the pH. Make sure the pH has come, you know, come within a range. You know, that 7 range is ideal to make sure that we flushed all the acid out of them. Also, you should notice a significant change in your quality of water and your flow rates. Once you've done, you are done flushing, you can go ahead and shut off the system. Close your inlet valve. At this point, the system will be relieved of pressure you can then go ahead and remove the union, the true union ball valves, take them apart, remove the caps, and pull your membranes out uh, that are now clean. As I mentioned, I just have uh, a scan of the back here just to point out a few things. This here is an inlet valve. Again, uh, allows you to maybe do some service, change some things without having to drain the whole system down. However, this valve really, you shouldn't have to close it. Um, because at that point you're going to be shutting off your your pump and deadheading against it so not a lot of reason to ch close this valve however it gives you some maybe some options to not only um, shut things off to so everything doesn't back drain but if you do need to take it apart then there's a complete set of unions there as well the bottom you'll see there is your feed line so if you are going to only do one membrane at a time close one or the other that's your feed to that particular membrane housing you also have a direct drain over there for flushing if you wanted to hook a hose up and not run it through the, the rest of the flow meters and uh, through the housings. You can dump 
uh, from that valve as well. On the front side you can barely see it, uh, but there are two valves, those are your product water valves. Uh, again, if you're not using that membrane, close off all the, the valves to that particular membrane housing. If there's any questions, feel free to call Diamond H2O at 